why this is a problem for LED. We want to calculate the moment respect to an axis. In this case, they want us to calculate the moment respect to the axis x. So, moment respect to axis x. So, as you recall, the definition of moment respect to an axis is the moment respect to any point, and in this case, we call the origin of our coordinate system. Oh, so is the moment respect to any point of the axis, in this case the origin belongs to that axis, scalar the axis where we want to calculate the moment, so along the axis. And this is a scalar quantity. So this is a vector. This is a vector, but as you remember, when you multiply two vectors dot product, you get a scalar quantity. So this doesn't have a line right here because this is a scalar. Um, and the definition of this moment right here is the distance. This is the point A where the force is located. So the distance between O and A cross the force scalar i. So we need to find this quantity and we need to find this quantity in order to produce this product and then multiply scalar by i. So let's do that. R O A will be the position vector from point O to point A. It, well, the distance are given, we see that we have to cover 0 0.3 in J, in, in the y direction, right, and 0 0.6, 0 0.5 in K, which is the C direction. And this link over here is parallel to Y, therefore we don't have any distance in the X direction. So we have 0 0.3 in J, plus 0 0.25 in K, and that is given in meters. So we were able to find this over here. Now we have to find the force. The force has a magnitude, and it's the magnitude is uh, given right here. I just read in the slide that is 200 newtons, so we have the magnitude of this force. And we will multiply by the cosine vectors. You remember this is the cosine of alpha in I plus cosine of beta in J plus cosine of gamma in K, which are alpha, beta, and gamma are the angles that the force form, which is each of the axes. This here goes all the way to here. So this is. 120, as you see in the figure of the slide, is the angle between the axis X and the force F. Therefore, I can write as a vector, right, 200 cosine of 120 in I for J is 60 degrees, right? This little line is parallel to J, so it will be cosine of 60, and the gamma is the, ve the angle between the force and the C direction, which is 45. And this is in newtons. So this is, you remember that the cosine of 120 is negative of sine of um, cosine of 60, which is one half, therefore that gives me negative 100 in I plus 100 in J, and cosine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2, so that gives me 100 square root of 2 in K. So, and this value over here is the force. So we were able to find both values that we need. Now, we can either have two approaches. Either we multiply those two vectors cross product and then multiply by i, 
or we include the i into our matrix when we are multiplying. So the multiplication will be equals to. So since i, you remember that I here I have to put i, j, and k. But for my vector, this is equals to zero, and this is equals to zero, and I only have one over here. So I will substitute, instead of writing i, j, and k, I will already put the magnitude of this vector, which is one. So I put one over here, zero, zero. So this, is, this vector over here represents this vector over here, okay? And then I put in my second row, this vector, so you have 0, 0 0.3, 0 0.25, and in the third row, I put my vector of the fourth, which is a negative 100, 100, and I can already multiply, but you can always leave it the square root by the end, or you can multiply the square root, but be careful always to maintain enough decimals, even though I don't write them, I maintain the whole many decimals, in order to not to carry rounding errors. And this will be equals to one times this, this little determinant, which will be then 0 0.3 times 141.4 minus 100 times 0 0.25. And I don't do the rest of the multiplications because I'm getting a scalar. So this is zero times the rest of the determinant zero. So this is the value that I get. And when I calculate that, I get that the moment respect to axis x is equals to 17.42 newtons meters. And this is the value that we were looking for, which is this one. And as I said, this is a scalar. And this is the solution of this problem.